but it's really the same thing times four yep. and you can do it i yep. believe in you So guys, welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Moto Stories with Unky Phil and John McElfresh, one of my favorite humans, absolutely. We're having Mai Tais tonight, so we're dressed in our Hawaiian livery. So we're here to make your winter a little brighter and a little cheerier. And if you notice, I got my glasses on. When I've got my glasses on, that means we're going to do something technical. It's a real spectacle. It's We're, we're going to fall into the grinder and make a spectacle of ourselves. <laughs> so what's going to happen tonight is we're going to talk to you about carburetors. The Germans call these Vergassers. And what a Vergasser means is it literally takes fuel, uh, in which case we talk about petroleum products. Gasoline. Gasolina, right? And we mix gasolina with air and we hope to achieve this perfect stoichiometric mix. And stoichiometric mix, look it up, S-T-O-I-C-H metric. When we look at that, that is 14.7 to one, give or take, of gas particles per air. So we want 14.7 airs to one gas. And if we get it right, the bike runs beautiful. If we get it wrong, goes to hell real fast. So too much gas, not great. Too much air, well, it's the opposite of what you think. You think that if you get a lot of gas in, it's gonna get hotter. Nope, that's not true. If you get a lot of benzene, you get a lot of petroleum products, and you get a little bit of air, it runs actually kind of, kind of. You can lean out. Well, it's really bad for your mix when you've got not enough air and too much gas. That's rich. Oh, that's way too rich. And your yeah. spark plug's gonna look dark and black and sooty and terrible and your bike's gonna and, run like hell. It can run hot rich, it can run hot lean. Bingo. The, now, the, where the sweet spot the is sweet the spot. proper stoichiometric mix. Right, 14.7 parts uh, air, one part fuel. Now, when you're running lean, that's the dangerous thing. So lean is you don't have enough fuel for all the air you're bringing in. And lean happens a lot of different ways and the carburetor's there to adjust that. And too much air is running too hot. O2 is really, really hot. Now generally you, you want yeah. to run as lean as possible. Exactly. But you don't want it to run at 1200 degrees because that's when aluminum, aluminum. melts. Yeah. And they have what are called, like especially on old two strokes, yep. you could have a, a pyrometer Mm -hmm. which is actually looking at your exhaust gas temperature. Right. Measuring how So you can run it right up to the edge and not melt your pistons. But that guy right there, that controls the happy. That controls how much gas and how much air we have. And it has to do it in a really tough way because it has to do it not just at the idle. So the idle is when everything's sitting normally and the bike's sitting there hopefully and kind of going bop, 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 bop at about 1200 RPM. Well, you have basically three different uh, three different circuits. You have your idle circuit, yep. you have your mid-range, which is everything between idle and full throttle, yep. and then you have your full throttle. Uh, WFO, man. Now, right. we could also say we have an enriching circuit. Yep. So that's when you first start the bike and you pull the choke, mm -hmm. or you pull whatever right. enriching that it, the bike has. And that's a common thing. Several and different types of carburetors, and they do all these things in different ways, yeah. but that's the basics. Most of the time when somebody says pull the choke, very rarely is it actually a flapper that goes in front of the airflow and, and chokes it off. And a strangulator. That's right, and a strangulator. So most of the time though, when they say to start the bike, cold start the bike, you use what's actually an enrichener. On this particular bike, it's an enrichener and it opens a separate passageway that goes right from the float bowl, right into the side of the carburetor and right into your engine. You got it directly there's nothing you can do about it it's mechanically open and it's going to stay open and it's going to enrich in the mix at all times until you close it until you close it. exactly so you're going to let the bike run for a minute or two and every old bike should run don't even think you know if you start an old bike up and it's running and it's running on one or two cylinders or it's doing something stupid just let it run yeah. let it run Give i don't even time. i don't even care how it runs like that yep. i care how it runs after three or four minutes of good warm-up getting heat up yeah. So now, John, let's talk for a second about idle adjustment, because that's the first thing when we have a bike or we have a carburetor that we're looking at and we're trying to start the bike and it keeps dying, it keeps falling on its face. There's going to be some method of adjusting the RPMs at its lowest point when you're not giving it any throttle. So what you're adjusting is your air fuel mixture. And there are two different types of carbs. There is a carb like this one. Mm -hmm. that has the air screw in front of the Venturi. Mm -hmm. The Venturi is a choke point that creates a high pressure area that sucks gas air fuel into your inlet stream. Do you want to give them another 
I, one of my favorite words. Say it. The Bernoulli principle. Okay. The Bernoulli principle means as air goes past a given orifice faster, it takes more of whatever's waiting standing by with it. So the faster the air goes through that venturi, that, that decreasing uh, radius, the, the faster it goes through there, the more fuel it takes with it. Mm -hmm. It's great. And you can imagine that too. If you're blowing past a straw and you blow real hard past the straw, it's going to pull more of the fluid in with it. That's Bernoulli's principle. And it couldn't, we couldn't have carburetors without it. Yep. So every carburetor has an air fuel mixture screw mm -hmm. and it's either before the Venturi or after the Venturi. And depending on where it is, depends on what it's adjusting. That's right. If it's before the inventory, it's adjusting your airflow through the jet. So every jet, including an idle jet and a main jet, will have what's called an atomizer. Mm -hmm. And that allows fuel to come from the car, from the float bowl up into the jet, and then air from the back of these little holes in the carburetor goes through that atomizer and up into the inlet stream. And if you could imagine taking a straw and putting it into one of your favorite drinks, and taking a big heave on that straw. Well, imagine if we punched a bunch of holes in that straw, you'd get the drink, but you'd also get a lot of air. So it would mix the, the, the drink and air together as you draw it up. That's exactly what happens there. Yeah. Are we still talking about carburetor? Oh, yeah, we are yeah. still talking about carburetor. Okay, so you have a, <laughs> so on this particular carburetor, the air fuel mixture is before the Venturi. Yeah. Yeah. So when you turn this screw in, you're closing off the air. Yeah. And when you run it out, you're opening up the air. So the more air that mixes, the less fuel and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Most carburetors, a rule of thumb, almost every carburetor out there mm -hmm. is turn this all the way in and back it out one and a half turns. Now some are two, some are two and a half. Right. And you can find that out from looking at your manual. Right. And that goes back to the explosion that should it happen sure does. with anybody who's working on a carburetor. And that explosion is the exploded view of a carburetor that will help you understand exactly what your carburetor and is we'll doing. And we'll bet you that Steve will put an exploded view up right here at this point. Somewhere between us, some screen will come down and there'll be an exploded view of a carburetor. So let's talk about problems that happen with the carburetor. Absolutely. Where do most of the problems happen with the carburetor? Well, the biggest problem with carburetors is the fuel that's inside of them dries out or starts to evaporate. And that usually causes a problem in your idle circuit. Smallest hole in the carburetor. It's just slightly thicker than a human hair. Yeah. Well, a beard hair for sure. I think it's 033 thousandths yep. is a, an average of what they are. So it's usually in your idle But So you might get a bike where you can start it up and if you leave the choke on, it'll yeah. run pretty good. Or you keep her WFO. Yeah, rah, rah, yeah. Rah, 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 rah. and then she's good. But as soon as you turn the choke off or you let off the throttle, bleh, Dead she dies. Yep. That means you really need to clean, and we're not gonna go into it, but if you take your float ball off, there's a there's an idle jet, there's a main jet. Some bikes have a three different jets. Three different they have jets. A, they have an idle, a medium, a primary. Right. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on there. If That's, it's brass and it's got a flat head on it, it's a flat like, head. I did want to speak to that. It's, it's a qu quick question: Is why are there brass parts in your carburetor? Because brass does not corrode and it's very readily machinable. Yeah. So the reason your jets and a lot of the parts in your carburetor are brass right. yeah. is because you can drill a hole in brass and it makes a really nice clean hole and it never corrodes. So if you get water or anything yeah. in your fuel, that's why jets are brass. And, and that's some why of when you take your carburetor apart and it's green. Yep. That's brass. That's it's oxidation. It's because of the brass. Yeah. And so, you know, some of the hot rod bikes we've done over the years, we've had to shop in the jet ski industry to get our jets. And those jets are stainless steel because they can be used in a saltwater environment. So we're at idle. Yep. Our bike's running pretty good on the idle circuit. You got it. We give it a little gas. Yep. And, you know, as soon as you go mob throttle. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, your idle circuit is always open. Yeah. It so never it's closed. always adding a certain fuel mix to the, to the mix. So changes in your idle circuit change everything across the whole RPM band and no matter where you are. But usually once you come off idle, you're in your mid range yeah. and that's mostly controlled by, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little needle. There is a needle. Yeah. And yeah. so most of these Mikuni style carburetors are what they call mechanical carburetors. There's a needle hooked to that spring slide. So the slide is there to control how much air goes through the passageway. And it's sort of like a guillotine. If you can imagine a guillotine, when a guillotine's down, nothing goes through it. And when the guillotine's up, John goes, and John takes never his microphone mind, right Never up. mind about that. But when we look at that, if we can look at that, the biggest thing that's different is the volume of air is changing, but the needle is also going right. upright. And when that needle raises upright and the needle goes up to its high rise position, What's gonna happen is a lot of more fuel is gonna come out of the float bowl, go past the needle and into the Venturi. 
So two things are happening at the same time. One is this slide is opening and letting a ton more air through, but also with it at the same time, a needle is opening and allowing gas vapor to come in from the float bowl where gas hangs out and waits. The metering needle. And that what... literally needle opens up. And so when you're looking at that carburetor and you have your carburetor on your motorcycle and you look at it, you see that the slide is going up and down, but there's a brass stick in the middle too. That brass stick has a machined tip on it and that's called the needle. So be aware that anything that gets in the way of that needle, schmutz, schmoo, dead animal carcasses, whatever happens to be living in the bottom of your a carburetor, walnut. a walnut, uh, look, the stuff that we've seen and we've pulled out of carburetor float bowls is for the record books. We've yeah. seen stuff that looks like pre-Cambrian era dinosaur droppings that come out of these carburetors. But all of that, the biggest problem we've seen, John is famous for a phrase that said, he's never met a carburetor. That didn't need clean. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's totally the, te that's and truth right If there. you told me you just cleaned a carburetor, I still want to clean it. And even sometimes I'm, I'm not, I'm guilty. I maybe I've cleaned a carburetor, the bike's still not running right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes two times. Sometimes you got to go back in there. And what you're looking for though is where the problem is. If it's in your idle circuit, if it's still not idling, if it's if you got medium range and you've got full throttle, right. you know it's in your idle circuit. So you're looking at your idle circuit when you go to clean the carburetor. Absolutely. Now here's where we're gonna tell you guys, as experienced bad mechanics that we are, there's one thing that we'd like to tell everybody out there. Carburetors aren't really that terrifying. I know a lot of people get worked up about it. Yep. They're really not that scary. Especially if you're working on a single or yep. uh, a twin cylinder motorcycle. Very easy. It gets a little stupid when you have a four cylinder motorcycle, but it's really the same thing times four yep. and you can do it. I believe yep. in you. Now, when you do this and you decide to go forth, when you decide to dive into one of these, please look at your tools. This is a time for brass. This is a time Grab that brass brush you have that you got, you know, at the, the the hazard fraught, and get that brass brush and steal some of the threads out of it. Grab your handy Gerber plier out, rip some of the threads out. Now, my my thing is the only acceptable thing yeah. to cl clean a jet out yeah. is one bristle from a wire brush. Yeah. So this That's is where feeling, people don't go grab a safety pin. No. Don't grab anything other than one dental picks, whatever. That's one all bad bristle news. from a br right. wire brush. That will save you trouble. Brass is so fragile, brass is so soft, yeah. that it is not uncommon for us to watch people destroy perfectly good carburetors. And once you do that, and you screw up the size of those orifices, or orify, yeah. they will not run correctly. The good news is it's jet. Yep. You could replace it if you know you've messed it up. And you'll sound cool when you talk to your friends about how you cleaned out all your jets. Because yeah. jets is just a cool word. So you can't be like, you can't be too wrong in the motorcycle community when you're like, yeah, well, you know, I you know, I got my starter jet out and got my pilot jet out, got the mid-range jet out, now cleaned my, out the atomizer. My favorite circuit on a carburetor yes. is... WFO. Wide open. Wide freaking open, Jeez, yeah. She's wide open. Yeah, and... So when the carburetor's wide open, yeah. That, that metering needle's all the way all up. All the way up. It, it's dumping everything yeah. it can dump through the main jet. Yep. Your, uh, your idle circuit's working there, but mostly you're just dumping gas into yep. your bike. Yeah. Now, how do you know if that mix is right? Well, generally, a general rule of thumb is when you go w wide throttle, throttle wide open, yep. if, it, if it bucks wow. on you, if it yep. starts bucking on you, that's too rich. Too rich. If you go and you're, you give it full everything but full throttle, but when you go to full throttle, it sort of dies down and feels yep. leaned out. It's leaned out. You leaned need out. a bigger main jet, and that's a big. So that's tip. just that's just a very general Re thing. Really good seat of the pants too. Yeah. Once the bike's warmed up, if you go out and rip on it, and your bike goes like ga 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 ga, that's too rich. If your bike goes. Gah, and you're like, oh man, there's more there. And you know that you crack it wide open, it actually gets slower. Yeah, if you back off your yep. throttle and, and it, it goes seems off. to have more power, yep. you need a bigger main jet. You do need a bigger main jet. And or, or you've got something clogging something somewhere. And you need to clean the yeah. shit out of it. And, and, and that just goes without saying. And maybe too, and maybe you took your air box off or maybe you took your snorkel off and you got too much air, which means not enough fuel. So think about that. If you've done and removed a bunch of stuff, you may have changed that stoichiometric mix. You put a fucking rag under your seat and you've blocked off. We the know you did. 
You guys have all done it. We've seen it here at the shop. You, we we know what you do to your motorcycles. Don't try to lie to your dentist. He knows you're not flossing. No, we could go into the float. We no, we're not going to get there's into that. All there's kinds all kinds of all kinds of. This, but that's the advanced this, class. This is like yeah. this is just touching this is a the morsel. surface. It's just a morsel. Yeah. So guys, if you liked it, or you think we're full of crap, leave us a message. You know in the doobly-doo and give us some context let us know what you're talking about let us know what your experiences are we want to know that but more importantly you know hey like us like us is one thing i honestly say subscribe to us because they're not bad i've been watching them these guys that are out there on the other of side of the, the cameras things, of all the stupid things i've watched on youtube yeah this is by far not the stupidest no thing no seen. we're not even in the we're not even in the close three no yeah i think we're good this so, has a little bit of value a a little bit of value. A bit of value. And, and honestly, what else are we going to do? It's cold out. So remember to send us a Moto Stories with Hunky Phil at gmail.com if you'd like to do that method of communication. Or if you think this is cool, look up Cleveland Moto on any of your devices or anywhere. That My favorite thing is when you fact check us. When you, If you want to come back and be oh, like, yeah. what you said about that carburetor and about that thing, I love that. You'd be amazed at how many set things we can. Yeah. I want to be set straight. It, and the stuff we can miss in a 12 minute video will blow your brains out. I mean, yeah, it's amazing how wrong we can be. So let us know and uh, ride fast and take chances. <laughs> Why does that happen? <laughs> it's the worst thing. I feel like a monkey. I feel like an organ grinder's monkey. And somebody's like, oh, wait, hey, somebody said ride fast and take chances. My whole life, I'm going to be like disabled because if somebody says ride fast and take chances, I'm going to sing that stupid song. Oh man, it's a curse. I'm telling you. <laughs> mm.